I really appreciate you guys being here, man. It's a, it's a real honor for me to be able to pursue my second dream. <laughs> Seriously, it's not lost on me what a privilege it is to chase my second preferred profession, you know? <laughs> not everybody gets to do that. My first dream was to be a basketball player. I wanted to be uh, in the NBA. And because I grew up in such a white town, that dream lasted way longer than it should have. I, uh, <laughs> I didn't get the reality check early enough. I was like 6'4 below the rim center. Look out, Chicago Bulls. And um, here comes the medium fundamentals. And um, <laughs> I actually became a comedian during a basketball game. Yeah. That's what everyone wants to know when they meet a comic. When'd you know you were funny? When'd you know you wanted to be a comic? What's your origin story? <laughs> Mine happened during a basketball game. It was my senior year of high school. And in my hometown, Springfield, Missouri, there's a, a big tournament every year called the Bass Pro Tournament of Champions. <laughs> now, I realize every word of that sentence was more confusing than the one before. I... <laughs> I might as well have said the Dick's Sporting Goods celebration of Hanukkah. It doesn't make sense, but it's real. <laughs> Bass Pro Tournament Champions. So basically what happens every year, the top high school prospects and their teams fly to my hometown, play the local schools, and kick the shit out of us in front of our families. It is a time-honored tradition. And if you're from where I'm from, it's an honor. You look forward to it. It's, you want to play in the tournament. So my senior year, we were in it. And uh, we actually won our first round game. We weren't supposed to do that. We beat the uh, defending state champs from Kansas. They were previously undefeated from the season before. We gave them their first loss. Big deal. Local paper runs a story, generates all this buzz. Second round game, it's packed. 10,000 people are at this game. And we're getting ready to play a team from southeast Missouri, a little town called Poplar Bluff. And they had a guy on their team named Tyler Hansbro. So if there's any hoop heads in the house, you might know. If not, Tyler Hansbro, uh, he played four years at the University of North Carolina. Uh, he graduated the all-time leading scorer in ACC history. And he played seven years in the NBA. Um, he's 6'9", 250 pounds, of just hay and dip spit <laughs> and just cinder block, just country straw. He's like if a farm ox came to life in a Pixar movie <laughs> and got really good at basketball. That's what he is. His nickname is Psycho T. So he's a 6'9", 250 pound psycho. Okay. And so we're getting ready to play them. And uh, Roy Williams, who at the time was the head coach for the University of North Carolina, was there recruiting Tyler Hansbro. And my dream was to play at North Carolina. I wanted to be that white dude at the end of the bench just waving a towel every March, just happy to be there, you know? So I was getting hyped, man. I was in the locker room pumping myself up, like, I'm about to show Roy Williams who he should be recruiting, you know? <laughs> Listening to Eminem, like, my palms aren't sweaty, bitch. What's up? I'm calm as shit. <laughs> I had a little spaghetti, but we're keeping it down. Because I'm built different. <laughs> so I'm amps. We go out, we warm up. Coach calls us over for the huddle to give us the game plan. This was the game plan. Is that right, fellas? They have Tyler Hansborough on their team. That's true. But they also have shooters. So... Here's what we're going to do. DeForest, that's me. <laughs> You're guarding Hansbro, one-on-one, -on -one, no help. <laughs> and I was like, I feel like I might need a little help. I don't know. <laughs> Are these other shooters being recruited by North Carolina? I didn't think so. Can we focus on the one? But that was the game plan. And the way I'm wired, man, I don't back down from a challenge. That's the game plan, that's the game plan, let's go. So I got out there, I rolled my sleeves up, I got in a stance, and I guarded Tyler Hansborough, one-on-one, -on -one, no help. And I held him 
to 35 points. <laughs> he was 12 for 12 from the field. He didn't miss a shot. He, he made two threes. He doesn't even shoot threes, but he made two. And he had 13 rebounds. It was a performance so legendary. It is permanently enshrined on the Bass Pro Tournament of Champions website as one of the single greatest performances in the history of a tournament that Kevin Garnett also played in. So, that's true, by the way. I encourage you to Google it after the show. Google Tyler Hansborough, Bass Pro Tournament of Champions. You'll see the box score. I'm in there. I had 11 and three, not bad. He was guarding me too. But here's the thing. Did I technically lose? Sure. But I think we all won, really. <laughs> he got a four, full ride scholarship to North Carolina. I got this story, and <laughs> which one's really better, you know? <laughs> but there was a specific moment in that game where I became a comedian. They threw the ball to Hansborough in the post, and I knew he was about to dunk on me from experience. <laughs> I was like, I'm not letting this happen again. Six times is simply too many. <laughs> so he took a dribble to the middle. He was about to go, and I just wrapped him up like this. I just wrapped him up. I grabbed my wrist, and I was like, mm-mm. And here's the thing. I took creatine in high school. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's that stuff that Mark McGuire took that's, like, not steroids, but it's kind of steroids. And... Uh, <laughs> I was artificially strong, is my point. <laughs> I wrapped him up, and I was like, no, nope, not today. And he just went through me. He just, <laughs> he just took me with it. I left the ground, too. <laughs> I was like, ooh, we're both dunking. And uh, <laughs> he just cocked the ball back, <laughs> threw it through the rim. It bounced off my head. <laughs> and went into the stands. And I had a moment of clarity. And the moment of clarity happened the exact moment his penis made contact. It was... Right as it grazed my upper left eye. Because I... I remember it vividly because I was like, wow, it feels long and heavy. Look at that. Way to represent the brand, Tyler. We got some thick-ass white boys out here. Right as it hit, moment of clarity, I was like, boom, oh, I see. I should be a comedian. I should, I should write this down and make it funny so it doesn't manifest as trauma. And here I am. Thank you.